The Cathedral Innovation Centre is founded in the port city of Portsmouth, where the docks were under threat for thousands and thousands of people losing their jobs, where there are white working class communities where kids really struggle, where there's big problems of social aspiration, and diverse communities that um, have been living with all sorts of social risks. Two of us sat down with the cathedral and said, this building that you're not using, can we borrow it please? So we can unlock it and they said, what for? I said, we'll, we'll call it the Cathedral Innovation Centre and we'll help them launch their own entrepreneurial responses to social needs, their own alternatives to being on benefit and their own firms as they try to get them off the ground. And we'll try and do this in a way that's more cost and socially effective than anyone else is trying round about. from the council and our community point of view is that it really gives an opportunity for social enterprises within the city to have a place where it can, they can go to uh, work with each other. The Cathedral Innovation Centre is about having an asset, it's the building is an asset and I think it's the way that they've kind of endeavoured to use that and bring in other communities, other skills. Um, you know, not everybody has a building like this that they can just bring people in, so that's what makes things happen, that's the glue if you like. From the City Council's point of view, it gives us ideas about how we can work in a different way um, and have experts on our doorstep. It's very difficult in this day and age to um, start up a business and get help, and it's a way of sort of and not just helping them, it's also a place for everyone to get together and, and uh, help each other. And some of the organisations, in particular the start, they were to give each other business. The um, design, the printing company and the, the food park, they moved on now, but they were able to help each other with different ways uh, and give each other business. So that was a way of sort of um, improving them as well. And providing uh, a living for themselves, far and away above what the state can provide, and give them self-respect give them new impetus to actually to improve their life and, and to go on and, and further enhance our society. It's, economy, it's an economy where everybody has the right to be entrepreneurial, right? So we talk about welfare rights, but the flip side of welfare rights is everybody should have the right to be able to build a firm or to build their work around their needs and their time. People that traditionally uh, we've not never thought of as being the great entrepreneurs. They're the people that would never be invited to a Dragon's Den on television. They've got that agency and they've got that energy because they use that agency and that energy every day to overcome their disability, to overcome their depression, to overcome challenges in their life or whatever it is. And when they apply that to economic growth, they unlock value that people in much nicer places can't imagine, but actually people in much nicer places get very excited by when they meet them. That's social solidarity in the economy to me. Let's start a British dream. Let's start getting people to start their own companies and own business. Let's all try and understand the problem before we decide on the solution. Let's collaborate together and we can create something that endures and really gives us a, a, a sustainable future. Let's believe that we can be as inventive and creative in addressing pressing social needs and in growing social jobs as we can in growing traditional wealth and traditional firms.